I love the way the First Gen Lounge makes me feel. Because it creates a space where I belong, where we're able to create community. The fact that it's a community. It's a safe place. It also gives me a place to understand different perspectives. The stories of these individuals prescribe transformational perspective. I receive encouragement, enlightenment, empowerment. And also serve as a catalyst to just keep going. Where we're able to be our true selves. I'm allowed to be an unapologetic first gen. And above all else, tell our story. And every episode is unique. I love it. I'm your host, Dr. Eve, and I'd like to welcome you to the First Gen Lounge. Welcome back. And if you are new, I just want to thank you for being here and for sharing the space. I hope that you enjoy and just come on back, come on back, come on back. So by the time that you are hearing this, I have announced, I have shared publicly that I've made yet another transition in my business. <laughs> in all the years that I have been an entrepreneur, one thing that I feel, in my opinion, I feel differently than when I, in a traditional space, is the amount of change that's happening all of the time. And I think about some of the things that I'm doing and will do, and there are moments where I'm like, again, again? <laughs> but again, again, again. So what I've shared um, at the time of this show is that my personal brand, Dr. Eve, will always be. I am, however, uh, have made the choice rather to go ahead and really put my company, Evangeline Worldwide, into the light. And by that, to lead with my company first. Um, and if you don't know, this would probably be a good time to share that essentially the way things are set up with me now, um, Dr. Eve is actually like a, an entity of Evangeline Worldwide. But needless to say, um, I was thinking about some things and really processing how things are, how I want things to be. And it was inevitable that I made this change. Um, I knew that it was coming one of these days, but maybe not even in this way. And there was some fear, you know, with making the change to, again, put Evangeline Worldwide first. But again, if you've been paying attention, you know, if you've been on this journey with me for a while, then you can see that Evangeline Worldwide has definitely been easing its way onto the front. Um, but back when I actually made the business name that a few years ago now, it was one of those things like, I think at that moment, I knew I was going to do something with this. I just didn't know what. So then comes clarity. <laughs> and with the moments that I've had, just again, reflect and grow and think about all the things, it finally made sense. And so just easing my way onto it, easing my way onto it. But if I can go back for just a moment, and you know, cause I'm not sparing you all the details because a change has happened. That's really the point. A transition has happened. And yet again, um, I was making this change. Like it started with the business name and then I moved into having changed my email domain, right? Something like seemingly so simple, but a thing that again, it was a, a progression. And then it was like, okay, now I'm going to introduce myself and put the business here rather than I'm just a speaker. I'm the founder and chief strategist of this company, um, which actually houses all of my projects. So the first gen lounge, uh, first generation university, the first gen shop, my brand is Dr. Eve and all of my signature programs are all under Evangeline worldwide and actually have been since its inception. But again, with all that, uh, just thinking about changing, again, change is the only constant in life. But when I think about how have I been so comfortable with changing? That's kind of, you know, again, where, I'm, where am I getting at with this? I did that. I've heard, you know, even recently, because I know everybody has their own perspectives. And I mean, you know, that's life, right? Think how we want to think. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Like, see the world how you want to, because it's your world. Literally, it's your world. Um, but I started to think a lot about what do I do when it's time for me to navigate change? And how do other people process change? And so we know the seasons change. We know that the only thing you know that's guaranteed in life is that things will change. But I know sometimes some of us have a harder time with change than others of us do. I'm also 
the young woman who moved, <laughs> you know, like I was cool with like, hey, going to college, left college, I'm going to Mississippi, Mississippi, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go this, do this, I'm gonna do that. Like I've, I like change. Um, it excites me, it's an exciting thing. And so I welcome change. So then again, how do I get to that? How do I process change or how do I make sense of change? So for you who may be changing or going through a change right now, going through a transition, um, and maybe if it's even not now, just in the future, some things to consider. At the end of the day, what does this change mean for you? What does it symbolize? And how does it align with what you envision for your life or for whatever that next thing may be? So I'm thinking about change. One of the things that comes to mind, of course, since we're just there, is the business. What do I see for my business five to 10 years from now? And is the person I am now, the way I'm functioning, operating, moving now, does it make sense for the vision? Does it align? And if I can answer that with a yes, then nothing needs to change. But if I'm looking at this saying, I don't think so, then maybe perhaps something to change but then what right so then you say well what is it the structure you know what is this thing that that needs to change so much for me to get to the next so for you when you're thinking about change that's happening in your life be it again that it's moving or that you're trying to lose weight or if it's even starting a business or if it's trying to get through grad school what is that thing for you that needs to change to get you to the goal that you have in mind and you know, we think about having goals or we think about doing things in life, period. But I think one thing we should give more thought to is the process to getting to those things. Because something that I know, and I think that you know, like, why do we have SMART goals? Because the SMART goals, it lays out the plan for said thing. But then when we think about things that are different than what we have, that requires change. So to even say, I want something different than what's going to be different about you or how you're approaching life or doing things to help you get to that goal. So thinking again about what you want for yourself, but also being brutally honest with yourself about the changes you're willing to make for the change you want to see. <laughs> Bars. Sometimes I just get myself. <laughs> I just get myself. But really, the, but that's that's just real up, real up, real up. Okay, so we make a new wars on the lounge, but straight up, straight up. Thinking about things where am I am I making the progress that I say I want to make and yet I'm not willing to change to make that progress? So then do I really want that thing enough which leads me to point out when you think about change or transitions of any kind, how badly do you want whatever the thing on the other side of that change looks like? Because if you don't want it bad enough, then of course it makes sense that you don't have the motivation to change things around and to do something different to get it. But that's where you have to be brutally honest with yourself about what you want. And it's what you want, not what's going to be best for your spouse not or your partner, right? Not what's best for the kids or mom and them, but being brutally honest with yourself about what you want because you have got to be the one to deal with the ramifications of whatever said changes. And that's not to say that however you may change or whatever thing you may want doesn't have um, the ability or it's not going to have implications, you know, for, for other people, right? Or for other things. But that is to say that you got to do what's best for you. You got to do what's best for you. But even if you say that this person or this thing means more to me, then that's what's best for you. And it ain't none of my business, right? But again, how badly do you want that thing? Because is your willingness to change then different? And I don't know if people really think about the fact that some people are okay with what they got, where they are, what they have, whatever. And that's why they don't change because they found what makes them comfortable or they found what, what they're happy with, they have contentment. Then I think that's the other thing why we have to be mindful not to push people to say, you need to change because maybe I like the way this is. <laughs> One reason I hadn't changed my hair. I must like it. <laughs> I love having my hair cut the way that it is. And when I discovered that about myself, 
it is really hard to convince me of otherwise. Like there's there's no, there's no convincing me that I need to grow my hair out. It just it just does not make sense. That's not a change I'm interested in. Point blank and period, right? But change is a thing that again you have to desire it, and some people just don't. So again, if you know that you don't, however. Is it okay for you to find it within yourself to be good with whatever situation you have or what things may look like that it is what it is? Um, the other thing is being able to weigh the cost. And when you weigh the cost of any change or any transition for that matter, so I guess I'm using them interchangeably right now, but weighing the cost and do you have more to gain or and or to lose on account of the change? So even if you say, I don't really feel really motivated to make this change, well, okay so if you don't understood but is there again more to lose or or more to gain and is that reason enough to be motivated or not one way or the other because i think sometimes we resist change because again it requires us to do something different to show up different to be something different to again get to whatever that new thing may be however really taking the time to say again but is it worth it to me to have that thing or to position myself for whatever I so desire, then I think that can be a motivation or a driving force to help you do what you feel like you need to do. Because again, going back to thinking about, should I really do this? Cause it's, oh, it's a rebrand. Nah, it it doesn't really feel like a rebrand to me. Not at all. It maybe it is and I'm just in denial, but for me, moving to have Evangeline worldwide really sit more at the forefront and to engage as a company um, is, is really big. And like when engage as a company, what do you mean? Because a lot of people who have also come into the space, like while I have a company, they've only been able to see me as still just a personal brand and just a speaker. When I've evolved from that, and I evolved from that a while ago, but I also didn't really think much about how me putting the personal brand first was still getting in the way of that. So a part of it, to be very candid with you, was brand perception. Um, And for me, realizing that to go where I want to go, I need to change how people are perceiving how they're working with me. And are they working with me as just a speaker or are they working with my company? And I keep driving this home. I have a company, I've had a company, but when everything I've only presented has really been, you know, myself as a personal brand, which their strength in personal brands, don't get me wrong about that. Absolutely, there is. But I know that it's different for, again, some of the future projects and things that I want to do that acting, um, shifting, structuring things differently was going to be tremendous for me. So that's what I'm going to say about that. And I'm going to leave it there. If you want more details, enroll in one of my programs. <laughs> so, oh, shameless plug in myself. Okay. Um, but no, but really though, so just going back to just thinking about the change, I realized like for what I want, this makes sense. And while it may feel uncomfortable right now, my future self is going to thank myself right now for being able to have the vision, but do what's necessary to get there. And so the other thing is also giving yourself time to think through the changing or transition. Um, I think sometimes we believe we have to rush to do something. I got to rush. I got to go fast. I got to do this now because we live in an age where you got to keep up. You got to keep up, keep up. <laughs> my uh, my sorority sister and I have this joke. <laughs> you got to keep up with the Johnsons. And so <laughs> just trying to keep up unnecessarily. But for any change that happens in our life, even if it's saying, I'm going to decide to date this person, or I'm going to get a tattoo, or I'm going to try a new diet plan. It requires us to be in a space of this is new and I'm trying to figure it out, point blank, period. And so when you think about that, if you give yourself time to just sit with it and not have to feel rushed to say if or not this is a change that you want to make anyway, that's really, hey, that's it. And so sitting with it, though, gives you time to feel through it, to think through it. Um, to just, to just be with whatever that forthcoming change may be, or sometimes you may be in the middle of a change and you just have to sit through that time of your life and just say, Hey, things are changing and I'm working through it and it's uncomfortable and it doesn't make sense or it's scary or it's all kinds of things that I don't want it to be, but I'll be all right. I'll be fine. Right. And I'm, I'm just giving myself the time and not have to say, I need to go left or right. Cause I think this so, um, 
so much that's not appreciated in just sitting with things and any of my friends can tell you <laughs> when it comes to me and I'm making a decision about something I will sit with it and I'm like give me a couple days give me a couple hours give me some time to, to really be with what I'm thinking and feeling about it and you have some people argue that as an entrepreneur you know that you should be ready to make a decision right now but I guess that's my decision too right if I can't have time to think about something then that means I need to say no so <laughs> okay knowing who you are you got to know who you are and so this change was one that again I've thought about and been thinking about for years it's, it's no wonder, you know, Dr. Eve and Evangeline Worldwide are federally registered trademarks. So even in thinking about something like that, it's been on my mind and how I wanted to position and how I wanted to move forward. It was just a matter of when, when would that be? When will I be comfortable enough? When will it make sense? And for me, clearly it hasn't been a one week thing or a one month thing. Although when it, I had full clarity about what I needed to do, it was less than two weeks that I really buckled down and made all the changes I need to make. I'm going to put it that way. But everything was already in place for me to be able to do that. So I think that's a part of what makes it so powerful and profound, for lack of better words, because everything was the foundations were already being laid. So it was kind of like, OK, now stop playing. Boom, go. And so thinking about, again, the change thing, if we go back to 2020, when Evangeline Worldwide was first even introduced to the world at all, here we are um, at the point of this recording two years into being that and to think now everything is finally catching up including myself my thoughts my feelings how I perceive myself things are 2020 was wild <laughs> you know how I the past couple weeks have, the couple weeks ooh. you know how the past couple of years have been and so even thinking about just the intensity of the transitions, uh, it, it's been real out here in these streets. But also, what I can say with full truth, and I'm okay with sharing, is that 2020 really woke me up to thinking about what I did need to change. Because as an entrepreneur, I don't want to go through what I went through again. I don't want to go through what I went through again. And you know, nobody could have predicted that what's been happening over the past couple of years was going to happen. Well, I get no people could. I'm going to say re regular folks. We couldn't have predicted it. Somebody knew it was up. <laughs> but, um, but for what it was worth, it really forced me to think, think deeper, think bigger, um, think in ways different and outside the box. But it really challenged me to grow. And I'm grateful for what has happened. And while, again, a, a, a slightly slower transition it was just one rebuilding confidence because if you watch a business literally fall apart overnight, it does something to you. But also give myself time to feel through that, but to also make sense of what I'm doing, but to also learn how to um, really think through the future more and to really think through what lies ahead. Like what really lies ahead for me? What do I hope for? Um, and is how I am now going to be good for five, 10 years from now. So be it that you're thinking about that personally, you're thinking about it, you know, as a, as an entrepreneur, business owner, I mean, professionally, whatever that looks like for you, it's really worth, uh, sitting with, uh, sitting with it and being broody honest and weighing the cost. So you get to do all those things when you sit with it, but needless to say, I invite change because again, I know change is the only thing guaranteed in this life, but also change uh, requires us to grow. It requires us to look at the world differently. It requires that we be intentional about how we live and about how we show up. But more importantly, that we are intentional about our life. You know, change is a great opportunity to be intentional. So all of that to say that if you have been looking for a sign about what to do, maybe this is your sign, boo-boo. Maybe this is your sign, I don't know. But really, no matter what you end up doing, just remember that you got this and you're only ever doing the best you can do at any given time that you can do it. That's what I trust, that's what I know, that's what life then taught me. But in the meantime, 
Go and do me a favor. If you enjoyed this, share it with somebody you love. Go ahead, share it with somebody you love because you know, that's how we help each other to grow. And also don't forget to go and check out the first gen shop. I'm saying go check out that shop. It's one of my favorite things, one of my favorite projects right now. And with all your changing, you can go get one of those notebooks and you can just sit and you can journal or you can go ahead and get 27 moments of reflection. You know, if you're an undergraduate, get the one for scholars. If you're a professional, get the one for graduates. And so you can just sit and reflect and just grow. And I didn't even have that plan to plug in here, but you see how that work? <laughs> Come on, clap it up for myself. But yeah, but really that's it. That's that's all. Um, before I go, know that I love you and I appreciate you. And I want you to keep pressing forward. All right, I'm out. Peace.